urged forward by the stimulus of new inventions and modernism, the beginning of the century witnessed the birth of many companies that produced what came to be called motorcycles. Italy, too, was affected by this phenomenon, and it was precisely during those years that the first companies sprang up with names destined to conquer the world. A wealthy widow had six sons, Giuseppe, Giovanni, Francesco, Filippo, Domenico, and Tonino. A tiny workshop was set up in Pesaro, following the sale of some lands. This was the beginning of Benelli in the spring of 1911. The eldest brothers, Giuseppe and Giovanni, having completed their schooling, worked here with the help of some hired laborers. When the Great War broke out, the newly formed factory's activities slowed down, but this was also the period in which the first project was developed for a single-cylinder, two-speed engine of only 75 cc, applied to the fork of a bicycle. But it was not until after the war that the first real motorcycles were built. These were a lightweight engine of 98 cc and two more of 125 and 147 cc, all with two gears and final chain transmission. As time passed, the youngest of the widow Benelli's sons grew up and developed a passion for competition. Antonio, known to everyone as Tonino, embarked on a rapidly rising career as an athlete winning the most important national circuits. In 1927, Giuseppe, the eldest of the brothers, built a four-speed engine of 175 cc with overhead camshaft, driven by a revolutionary system for that time, an L-shaped train placed in a light alloy carter on the right of the cylinder. This futuristic engine led to versions both for the road and for competition. It was with one of these models that Tonino Benelli won the first Italian title in 1927 for his family's firm, which he repeated in 28, 30 and 31. In 1934, the elimination of tax relief for this horsepower class ruined the market for road motorcycles and also marked the end of competitions in this category. Benelli was especially badly hit but quickly adapted its production. The Pesaro based company first built a 500 then a 250 which were practically identical. Both had a cylinder slightly inclined to the front and a single gear shaft distribution. They were produced in three versions, road, sport and super sport. The latter model was adapted to the demands of racing. The 250 made a stunning debut. Raffaele Alberti rode a particularly well-made model to win the world record for the flying kilometer. In 1937, the adoption of elastic rear suspension made the 250 much more manageable. In the grand prize of nations that year, the first three places were won by Soprani, Rossetti and Martelli, all riding Benelli's. At that point, Benelli's fame was becoming international and the first cautious steps were taken toward what in those days was the most difficult and thrilling road circuit, the Tourist Trophy. In order to win the treacherous circuit on the Isle of Man, Benelli decided in 1939 to hire an English driver, Ted Mellors, a great racing specialist. Mellors didn't disappoint and won a glorious victory in the lightweight TT category over the supercharged German DKVs that dominated the competition in that period. Then came the war, and with it, destruction. The Benelli factory was stripped completely bare, from supplies to warehouses to utensil machines, and even the buildings were damaged. Following the war, the Benelli brothers attempted to revive the company, starting by transforming approximately 1,000 military motorcycles for civilian use. 
At the end of 1948, Giuseppe Benelli made a partial split from his brothers and founded Motobi. For some years, it supported Benelli production and was absorbed by the parent company in the early 1960s. In 1949, the engine of the 250 twin shaft was completely redesigned and the following year, thanks to Ambrosini's prowess at the tourist trophy and the grand prize of nations, finally won the coveted world title for the 250. To conquer new areas of the market, Benelli first produced a 98cc model named for Giovanni's daughter, Letizia, followed by the 125 two-speed called the Leoncino. Following the Benelli tradition, the Leoncino was also used in competition with a rapid succession of victories. Among the most important were three victories for the touring bike and two for the legendary Milano-Taranto course, covered in a single day on the roads of that period and feverishly followed by the public, much like the thousand-mile auto race. A four-speed version of the Leoncino was called Osso di Prosciutto, or Hambone, and featured single shaft distribution with gear shift. In 1951, Ambrosini's legend was shattered in the trial runs for the Grand Prix of France on the Albi circuit when the driver was killed in an accident. Benelli withdrew from competition for a few years, but racing remained in the company's heart and it re-entered the field in the late 1950s when the legendary Mike Hailwood rode a Benelli in the Tourist Trophy. Beginning in 1960, the series of four-cylinder competition motorcycles was introduced, first in 250 and 350 versions, followed by the 500cc model. The company's epic fame returned, pitting Benelli's, driven by Provini and Grassetti, against crack adversaries with names like MV Augusta, MZ and many others. Tarquinio Provini won the Italian title two years running in 1965 and 1966. But the time had come for a meek-looking young man with glasses who was transformed into a champion without peer the moment he mounted a motorcycle. His name was Renzo Pasolini. <laughs> These years marked the duels between Pasolini and Agostini in the city circuits of Romagna, all along the streets and coast roads of Pesaro, Riccione, Cattolica, Cesanatico, Rimini and Milano Marittima. They were cheered on by enthusiastic crowds of supporters. In 1969, Benelli entered the World Cup with Pasolini and the Australian Ken Carruthers. But the season was not propitious for the Italian. After winning the Italian title for the 250 and 350, he had an accident, leaving the way clear for his teammate, who brought home the world title to Pesaro after 19 years. At the end of 1972, the Finnish champion, Jarno Saarinen, was called to drive the 500 four-cylinder in an unforgettable duel with Agostini, with Pasolini driving for Armacchi. But after the tragic accident in Monza that killed Pasolini and Sarinen, Benelli withdrew from competition, closing a chapter that had lasted over 50 years. In the road sector, the original and powerful 750 was introduced in 1974, equipped with a six-cylinder single-shaft engine with 75 horsepower that reached speeds of 200 kilometers per hour. 
This event coincided with De Tomaso's entry into the company team. During those years, Benelli's production spanned from 55cc mopeds to 125 single-cylinder two-speeds and two-cylinder four-speeds, all the way up to the 906 version of the 750 six-cylinder with 900 cc's. By 1981, the historic factory in Via Mameli was no longer sufficient, and within a short time, a new complex was built in Chiusa di Ginestreto, inland from Pesaro. At the end of 1995, Andrea Merloni, the head of Benelli, realized his dream of once again bringing the motorcycle brand to the attention of the world sports market. And, in just over 12 months, he christened his first Benelli. The debut was decisive, and at the end of the second millennium, a range of three 50cc models and three with greater horsepower came out. A mass production appreciated all over the world for cutting-edge style and technological innovation. But the real industrial and design challenge had already been launched. In the summer of 1999, the company presented the prototype for what would become the brand's great comeback in the market of high horsepower super sport motorcycles. This is a real thoroughbred with a 900cc three-cylinder engine and a name that commands awe and respect, Tornado. The arrival of this motorcycle with its aggressive, sleek lines stands out in the fine lineage of the company's tradition and its mechanical refinement Design and top-notch performance are once again the trump card of Benelli's fame. The following year, Benelli was invited to participate officially in the honor tour of the Tourist Trophy with 68 period models, 48 road models and 20 competition versions. On the Isle of Man, the public, for one of the most classic of motorcycle competitions, applauded the largest selection of a single brand name in the event's history. At the head of the show were two tornadoes, driven by Andrea Merloni and a former world champion, Kel Carruthers, who in 1969 rode up the Nelly to win the world title on the same tortuous track. In that first public exhibition, the tornadoes sped past the judges' booth, leaving behind the unmistakable high-pitched music of their three-cylinder engines. From that moment on, the tornadoes were off on a season of the most rigorous tests. Andrea Merloni knows very well that now is the moment to take on the challenge of world circuits. Side by side with the most seasoned and competitive motorcycle companies in the world, the tuning of a racing version of the tornado still requires great teamwork, road tests, aerodynamic wind tunnel measurement and exhausting sessions at the test bench. It takes months of concentration, lack of sleep, fatigue and steady nerves to put it to the test. And the real test is there at the gates. On the 24th of June 2001, the Australian Peter Goddard, driving a Benelli Tornado, debuted at Misano in the World Superbike Championship. The mark was hit dead center. And with this success, we can say that the first phase of Andrea Merloni's project was complete. In 2002, investments made in research applied to the competition flowed like fertile soil in the industrial production of a limited edition of 150 unique motorbikes designed for the most discerning enthusiasts. True lovers of two-wheeled vehicles, those seeking driving thrills and the best in performance. It was a winning choice and was to be applauded not only by the public but by the world press as well. Journalists for specialist publications described the Tornado Limited Edition as a motorcycle with outstanding maneuverability and handling, with high-level components to guarantee the finest performance in its class. But that's not all. Experts in the field won't fail to notice the unique qualities of the new Benelli engine. It features three unconventionally aligned cylinders that demonstrate the industrial commitment and effort of the Pesaro firm, which will soon offer a complete family of products with different horsepower for different uses. 
the Tornado Tre Novecento was presented to the general public at the Munich Fair in its final version at the beginning of 2003. This motorcycle is the expression of concept, an idea, the basic element of a product designed to last. A balance between refinement and mass production, a dream come true, the beginning of a great enterprise adventure on the part of major players in the world market. But the Benelli name has survived and has forged its way back onto the international scene once again.